Welcome, my name is Emily Long and I'm a senior Engler entrepreneur. I am a member of the Engler Agribusiness Executive Committee. We are delighted that you have chosen to be here this evening as we celebrate entrepreneurship. I would like to take a minute to introduce a few people. First of all, the executive team, Zach Secchi, Brandon Nichols, JC Spencer, Joe and Matt Brueger. Can you please stand? We also want to make sure to, for you all to meet Brennan Costello, who's the newest member of the staff. Brennan is our Chief Business Relations Officer and an Angler alumnus. Okay, he'll be here. Tonight we take time to celebrate innovators, entrepreneurs, achievers, doers, and risk takers. The Angler Lecture is a tradition of our community that allows us to bring a successful entrepreneur to campus that allows, sorry, to to campus who has demonstrated the core values of grit, courage, and passion. Tonight's guest speaker is someone who models what it means to aspire, to build, and to partner. Cassie Laposotis is a partner in her family's diversified agricultural company in Bridgeport, Nebraska. After college, she made the decision to join the family business and to tackle the hard work of running a feed yard, managing people mostly older than herself, and proving that leadership isn't dependent on gender, but on character, dedication, and work ethic. Cassie is a fierce advocate for our program and for taking on the risks that comes with being an owner. Her words tonight will resonate with all of us as she is a few years ahead in her journey. She has chosen to work with family and she has been willing to take on the responsibility and accountability that comes with entrepreneurship. Please help me welcome Cassie to the stage. Thank you, Emily. Um, first off, I'm very excited to be here and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you guys tonight. I, uh, I don't want to disappoint you, but I know Melissa put in there that I am opening for Brad Paisley, <laughs> but I am not going to sing for any of you. I don't think the hotel could afford the windows. <laughs> um, but yeah, as um, Emily was saying, so. I'm a fourth generation uh, member of my family's uh, cattle feeding and farming operation in western Nebraska. Uh, I graduated from Colorado State University with a degree in agricultural business. And upon graduation I did, I returned home um, immediately. Uh, I think my dad's manager quit April 30th. I graduated May 12th and I think I started May 14th. So, um, so yeah, I, at, upon graduating I did, I came home to work in my family's operation and, um, but before we go on to that, I was just going to give a brief, brief history of how my family's operation became about. Um, my, my great grandfather immigrated from Greece when he was 14 years old. He, uh, he worked in the railroad, he, uh, would, he would trail water in from two miles, um, as more or less of a slave. And then um, he came about, he, he worked in the sugar factories where he would, um, he was a foreman building six of the major sugar factories in the western Nebraska area. And from there, he ended up becoming, or becoming a foreman where he, he managed 300 men. From there, um, that's when we bought the farm, not we, he bought the farm in, um, in Bridgeport, and from there his son Connie took it over and grew it, started growing it, buying farms, buying land. From there, my dad took the same approach, buying farms, buying land, which has given me the opportunity today to be where I'm at. And without, without any of them, I wouldn't be able to be up here talking with you guys. So. Um, I'm very fortunate to have the opportunity I have. Um, I have very deep roots, roots in Bridgeport, where I'm from, and um, and that is something I guess I would I will never forget. Um, just the, having this opportunity um, is very rare and uh, very much appreciated. But I uh, grew up actually not working with my father as much. I grew up in my mom working on my mom's operation. She had her own ranch and feedlot. Um, bought her dad's ranch, uh, turned it into a custom feed yard, and that's where I spent my summers and weekends growing up. Um, learned to cuss from her, learned to ride a horse from her, learned 
the grit that it takes to be a woman in this in this in this industry, and um, so that's where I started to be able to understand actually what it takes to be a female in agriculture. Um, from there, went to college, came back, and uh, and I knew right away I had three major challenges ahead of me. I was a female. I was young. And, and the boss's daughter. Um, so I took that on as, okay, how am I gonna come back into this business and be successful and save a lot of, a lot of hardship along the way? Um, with that said, we had many challenges. Um, you know, being young, I was in, I, I didn't have the, I didn't have quite the experience that all the people that I was working with had daily. I didn't have, um, I wasn't there every day the previous years that they were. I, w I wasn't, I just wasn't quite there. Um, so I, I took it upon myself. I, I said, I'm gonna work harder than everybody else. I woke up, I was there before everybody else. I was the last one out the door. Um, I, you know, if there was an option to, to sit in the loader and drive it or to grab a shovel and scoop a bunk, I was the one with the shovel. Um, I made it about earning everybody's respect that I worked with. Uh, and, and my dad told me when I, got, when I started, he said, in five years, you, you might be able to be the manager of this place. And I laughed. I said, give me two and I'll do it. Don't tell him this stinking guy was right. It, it took me five years of learning to manage people, learning to work with different people, learning that people you see on the street aren't exactly the people that you have to deal with every day. And, um, and people challenge you in every way, shape, and form. People challenge you. And and I think coming out of college, that was something I was extremely naive about, uh, something that I would never have thought would take such a toll on myself. Um, I talk about, we were just talking about it tonight, negative people will bring you down. And, um, and I make it a very big point to surround myself professionally and personally with people that, um, they, they are inspiring. They're, um, surround yourself with good people is a quote I've heard my whole entire life. And I, I stand true to that. I, I think that negative energy is energy that'll just, it wears on you. And um, that is something I learned the hard way. Uh, I can now filter uh, out what it takes to, to, to find, build those relationships of people that I enjoy being around. Um, Another thing that I recently discovered about myself is that I've spent my entire life observing. And I think this, is, this attributes to some of the success that I've had along the way. I spent, by choice, I'd go with my parents to events, to ag events, to conferences, to um, suppers with clients, or with you know, bankers or accountants. And, and this was a choice sometimes I said my name was Cassie and I wasn't allowed to speak again at the entire table. And that was okay because what I've learned looking back now is that years observing people, observing experiences, observing interactions with other people, um, that has helped me to get farther ahead than I think of where if I would have spent my entire career pre-feedlot, pre what I'm doing today, just sitting at home texting or watching cartoons or not taking every opportunity that I had to network or an event like this, um, there's always something you learn or someone you meet along the way that'll, that'll uh, help you to become a better person in, in the industry that you work in. And it's not necessarily agriculture, but um, so I, I, wanna, I wanna say that taking that opportunity to observe really helped me to win, to grow. So when I was ready to take on the, my management role, I had already seen a lot of experiences or I had already observed 
what people in this industry or successful people in the business have have done along the way. Um, I, I want to take a minute too to talk about being a female in, in this industry. Um, we talked about it a little bit earlier, earlier today, and I think uh, I have a, I, I don't see it necessarily as much as of a challenge. I, I find it as I can do just about any job you know any of the guys can do unless it's like dealing with progesterone and nobody wants to be around you after you're dealing with that but i mean when it when it comes to you know i have i have a brain just like any other guy when i know i can't do all the physical labor that everybody else can do however i can strategically find ways to where i'm just as effective if not more effective being where i'm at and i and i and as a woman in this industry i i i, I think any of us are just as smart and intelligent and um, have just as much capability to be a part of it. And if you look around today, 15, 20 years ago, there wouldn't have been this many females in the room. So it is the decade of the woman, like Paul Engler himself said. Um, so I, I do want to say um, I also had a mentor. Uh, my mom was my biggest mentor. Um, she was what a pioneer in the industry. She was she was a badass and starting her own feedlot. Um, it was very unique. Um, when I would talk about my parents, I'd say when I yeah well my dad has his operation and then my mom has her in operation and oh your parents are divorced. <laughs> No, not exactly, <laughs> but um, it was a very unique way to grow up, and I think having her as a role model, having my dad respect her, support her, um, and vice versa along the way, I mean, they had to figure out a way to both be extremely successful in what they do separately, however, still raise a family together, and um, it was a unique dynamic. Um, a challenge on a lot of levels, but uh, but I think it's something that um, having a mentor, female, male in the industry, I, I think that is very big. And I think that if any of you do have the opportunity to be mentored, even if it's a one-time experience, you have an opportunity to learn from somebody who's done it, who's maybe it maybe it was a bad experience and they learned from it. Maybe you have a bad experience with that person, but you learned something from them. So I guess I, I challenge all of you guys to, to, make, to take every opportunity you have or every person you meet and find out something that you, you've never experienced along the way because everybody's, um, everybody has different experiences in life. Everybody has, um, they, they've seen something that you haven't and you can learn something from them along the way. And uh, that's, you know, going back to my college experience, that's kind of what I did. I, in college, I wasn't, I didn't go to college to come out with a 4.0 because that's going to be my next stepping stone to my next career opportunity. I knew what I was going to, I, I planned to return home and work with my family's operation. I like to call my college years my networking years. Um, and it was extremely successful. We, um, but, you know, and that's what, uh, when I was where you guys are today, I wasn't focused on building the business, building my business or starting a business. However, I did have an ex extremely huge challenge ahead of me that, that was a little bit different, but I think today it finally has snapped with me. I knew I was an entrepreneur at heart, I just didn't know when it would happen. And um, it was about four months ago. And I, I've all of a sudden, I've decided to start a business um, working alongside with my families. I still will have my job working parallel with my family's operation. And um, so that's something that also, if some of you guys are, are out here not knowing what your business is today, not knowing if it's going to be successful today, it might not be you're ready for it. It might not be the time for it. However, every experience that you can take, opportunity you can take, internship, traveling abroad, um, a unique class. I don't know if you guys, Steve Jobs, he, uh, he was 
I can't remember if he dropped out of school or so. He decided to take a calligraphy class one just out of the blue. And uh, he's the one who designed the Mac calligraphy, the symbol of the MacBook. Just by chance, he took this random class. Why I know that, I don't know. I read a book one time or something. But um, all any opportunity you have, good or bad, if you think it's for you, if you think it's not for you, I mean, you just do it and try it. And, and you might meet somebody there. You might learn something. Um, but I find that if today you're not an entrepreneur, that's OK. Or not, if you don't start your own business today, it's OK. Because somewhere along the line, it's going to hit you. And, um, and you'll find out what, what really what you're meant to be doing and what really makes you happy at the end of the day. And, um, and so just keep that in mind that don't get down on yourselves if it's not today, because it'll, it'll come. Um, I also wanted to talk about where I am at today in my career. Um, I'm at what I call a transition phase. I'm not really liking it right now, but um, I am in the agricultural industry because I feel, because I, I love working with cattle, I love working with cows. Um, it's a family operation that I had an opportunity to come back and, and to continue on. I love small town communities. Um, I love being involved with the day-to-day -day skills that it takes to, to make this business, business successful. However, I, uh, I now am in charge of numbers. Ugh. I have to have my paperwork right. I have to have my crews going. I have to have um, oversee the book work. I have, I have an immense amount of responsibility that I'm not used to. So oh, this delegating has had to come out in me and it's it's to the to the point where I'm not I, I'm hands on and I love it. However, for my business to grow and to be successful and to continue to be successful, I have to step back and take an overall big picture look at what I have to do to make it that way. And that's sometimes not being able to be out working with the cattle um, being outside, sometimes it's me being inside on a computer, taking a meeting um, on the phone. You know, everybody teases me, man, it must be tough to be the boss, driving around on your phone all day. Oh, it is. I want to be outside working. It's, it's, a, it's a tough gig, but it's something, and it's, it's, it's very, it's been extremely difficult for me to, to admit that I'm at that phase, but on top of it, actually be making the changes that I need in this business to make it um, make it successful. And I would still be out there today if it wasn't for my dad pushing me to be, to be doing this. So I also have to look at it as an opportunity to where I can be learning underneath him, learning under somebody who's, who's been in this business for their whole life, learning, making mistakes, um, getting a little ash chewing every once in a while because I screw up. It's, it's OK, I guess, but <laughs> no. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's all, I guess, how your outlook on it, uh, on, on when people are trying to teach you, when people are trying to push you, when people are trying to um, make you better. It might not necessarily be what you want to be doing in that moment. However, in the end, there's a reason for it, and there, um, in the end, it's going to be you're, make you a better person, better business partner, be, better, a better overall person. And I, uh, so that's that's kind of been my struggles along the way. Um, oh, what else, Emily? I had it all memorized. No, that's not true. I don't didn't. But, um, but no. I, I uh, again. I thank you guys all for coming down here tonight. Um, I hope you guys could learn a little bit about what I do. Um, learn about the struggles and and the successes I've had. And um, 
I also want to say, you know, I've learned a few things. Here's what else I've learned is I've learned to pick my battles. I've learned that everybody has an opinion. I've learned everybody doesn't necessarily want to hear my opinion. I've also learned that it's not, that I don't necessarily need to get, it, they don't deserve my opinion. Um, I've learned to be extremely selfish with my time and who I spend it with. I've learned that people actually do what you inspect and not what you expect. Um, and at the end of the day, I figure if I want to be a badass, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So that's all I have, short and sweet. I know you guys want to get to Brad Paisley, but are we opening up for questions? Is that, yeah. Yeah. How was it different working with your, you grew up working with your mom and now mm -hmm. you're working with your dad. What was like the big difference from growing up with that and now working with your dad? Well, my, <laughs> my mom and I were extremely identical. So um, I, I learned a lot with my mom. I, she taught me everything. However, at the end of the day, her and I would, we clashed because we were the same exact person. Um, working with my dad, uh, we have a lot of the same personality, the same traits. He's a little bit more scheduled and timely, which I'm not. <laughs> I, I, but I think that's kind of how we get along well is because I'm more like my mom. And, and um, it, it was very different. The job's different. The, um, it's two different, completely separate, separate operations. And uh, I, I don't know. It's just, it's been good, though. It's been really good. So, go ahead. Um, I don't think I heard you say what your business was that you started. I did not, no. Um, okay, so, you guys got some time? No, I'm kidding. Um, so, Bridgeport's a town of about 3,500 people, and um, there was, there's a building for sale. It's a two-story building, and um, I don't know why I came up with this. I don't know how. I just like this door hit me in the face the other day, it just hit me. Um, I, I'm gonna, I'm in the process of buying the building, we're in the negotiating phase. Um, and my, I'm ideally, I'm gonna turn the upstairs into loft, some apartments and some, what I'm gonna call a corporate membership, to where um, a lot of business is done in Bridgeport, but a lot of, but nobody stays in Bridgeport because the hotels aren't as good, um, and, and that's primarily the reason. We have great restaurants, great bars, great, uh, it's a really good atmosphere, but uh, a lot of business is lost in Bridgeport because they stay in Scotts Bluff or Sydney or surrounding areas. So uh, the upstairs will be like loft apartments and a loft corporate suites, and the downstairs will be um, a little business center with a kitchen in it, and um, so then people are available to rent the downstairs and have a, an event where there'll be a separate access for the upstairs for people to um, come and go and rent it like a little hotel. Good. Yeah, I'm going to give you guys the golden ticket. You make it their idea. <laughs> I'm, and I'm dead serious on this. You know, my first year, my first few years coming back, um, I saw myself as an employee, an employee straight up. I saw myself as, like, I was working. I was, I was learning the ropes. I was learning, you know, I might have seen something. However, I got my, Slay, my face slapped if I even tried to say anything because that wasn't my role at the time. And um, I know a lot of people come out of college like gung-ho, we need to be doing this, we need to be doing that. Um, and I did, I, my dad, he's extremely forward thinking and he let me, you know, I'm like, 
oh, I just got certified to AI. I, I want to AI some heifers. And he, he looked at me like, this is dumb for our, for our operation, not, not for AIing in general. It just doesn't work for our operation. And I'm like, I, I know this. I know what I'm doing. And um, we do not AI today. I will tell you that much. <laughs> um, he was right, but he also let me learn by doing. And um, it doesn't fit our operation. Um, but a lot of times and a lot of instances, if there's something um, in, in the last four, year, four years, it would be, if there was something I was truly passionate about, like red cows, four years later we have red cows. And my dad had a phenomenal idea about buying red cows. <laughs> and that's okay, that's okay. Now today, um, today is a little bit different. I, because I can truly say I am, we don't really have titles at, on our operation, but I, I oversee, I manage the feature. I mean, it is what it is. And so my dad's not up. I see him first thing in the morning, and I don't see him ever again throughout the day. So uh, normally when, I would, when we would be, you know, you know how are we going to wean these calves? How, what's the protocol? What's, he's, he's stepped away and says, whatever you want to do. And, and I, so I'm to the point where I tell him this is how we did it. And um, he trusts me enough, and I've earned his respect enough that if it's wrong, I'll come and ask him for help, or he'll probably see it before I do, and he'll tell me about it. But um, he, he's earned my trust, and it did take five years, and it, it took a lot of hard knocks, and it took a lot of, a lot of learning, but um, today I can finally make those decisions. It wasn't straight out of college. So, go ahead. Uh, you mentioned like taking every opportunity mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, how did you find the balance between choosing those things? Because I'm sure a lot of opportunities have come your life. That's that's a good question. Um, okay, maybe not take every opportunity, but <laughs> but I mean, you know, for example. When I was in college, I studied abroad, and everybody's like, "What are you? Why?" I said, "I just want to do. I can. I can go live in a different country for six months be, and get class credit for it because I can." Um, now, I wasn't on every organization. I was very. I picked and chose a couple that I was passionate about, and the rest I stayed away from. Um, but if there was a conference in town that I could go to, or if there was a meeting that I could tag along with my dad to, those would be more or less the opportunities that I, uh, more that I'm speaking about. Um, now coming home, uh, fresh youth coming back, you know, people, oh, we'll get them on our board, you know, some new blood. And um, thankfully my dad told me to pick two and stick with it because you will burn yourself out. Um, so I did, I picked two boards that I was very passionate about and um, uh, I've been on them for four years now and I think I'm ready to start looking for another opportunity, another board. Um, it's time for me to step down and let some new blood get in there, but um, yeah. Go ahead. That, well, it's like a marriage and somebody that you're not necessarily having to be married to. Um, you know, we work together all day, then you'd have to go to supper together with your family at night, and you can have the worst day and be mad at each other, and you still have to be nice to each other at the end of the night, um, where a lot of times you can take your work, keep it with your work, and have your personal life your personal life. Um, my dad and I get along extremely well. I mean, we have a very unique, I think, relationship. But another struggle that um, I was thinking about the other day was, so my mom was in a car accident about, it'll be three years in February. I think that life um, just, you know, an unexpected change in your life and uh, very emotional on all fronts but you still had to continue on with your business and continue on with your daily life but still had to find a way to to grieve without 
letting it affect like how I was professionally, it's been an ex it's been a struggle. And, and and there's still days where, you know, I can tell my dad will be having a bad day, or I'm kind of having a bad day, and it it's been. I think that's been the biggest struggle is just figuring out where to go from there and how 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 to act all the time because you just never you never know I I mean it's just it's been very difficult that way but I oh, I I honestly love what I do. I I say there's been struggles, but I I love the challenge of it. I love the constant. Um, there's constantly something, you know, in our operation. We we're constantly busy. If not, we're looking for a new opportunity. And uh, the the challenge um, or the the goals that we can make and we can we can finish them and say that they were a success. Um, the small town, I love being in Bridgeport. It's a very progressive small town, I'd say. Uh, there's a lot of kids our age that are back uh, working, doing what we're doing or what what I'm doing. So I have a lot of relata relatability there. It's, you know, we work hard, we play hard. Um, just the opportunity to be in the business and to have to be a part of a business that is successful has been has been fun for me. How did you decide that you were like ready to go back immediately as to maybe get some experience somewhere else first? Yeah, I, I get that question a lot. Um, I just Honest to God, I knew. I just knew I was ready. Uh, like I said, the op what I did in college, I would. There were times where they'd say, "Oh, you need to come back for the summer and work, or you need to be doing, you need to be working, you need to be on the family operation." And and like I said, like traveling abroad, or I took another class in Greece, or I worked for another company in college, and in the summer times, I'd come back three days a week to Fort Collins and work and. Um, uh, I was on the seed stock team where we visited a lot of other operations and um, I was ready but I also didn't have I didn't have the mindset that I was coming back to be the boss day one I think um, the attitude I have of I was coming back to earn everybody's respect got me a lot farther than if I would have came back and said well Cassie's back in town, so I'm the boss now. So that I think that mindset really helped helped me there. Tom? So have you what steps have you learned about building a team around you, the people that Yeah. 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 Um, there are a lot of, lot, a lot of different things that we did. Um, like I said, just being the first one there, the last one gone. Um, I, I realized that those guys have been there 13 years every day, and I hadn't been. So when it would be, when we were, say, shipping a pen of fats, and I already knew which gate we were going. I know this is a small um, example, but I already knew which gate is the better one, but I'd ask, hey, which gate are we going out of? Hey, how do you want, where do you want me to be? Instead of me telling them where they need. So I built, over time, built this um, team of having them teach me and coach me. And then I never turned around and said, okay, now I'm the boss, so now this is, I'm telling you where you need to be. It was, we were constantly developing each other, um, earning one another's trust. Uh, I did, at, about two years ago, I took a leadership class that was, um, it was eight, eight days total. Um, and after having experienced for three years, I took a class where I could relate and say, okay, this is what I'm doing wrong, and this is where I need to improve on. Um, this is where that class really helped me 
to get f ahead um, and to learn about a lot of things where I myself could improve on. Um, I've learned that how to hire people that fit our company. Uh, you don't always know day one, but and we've made mistakes along the way, but you get a pretty good idea of people that you want to work with every day. And you, I know my guys and I know how, who, how their attitude is. And you bring a bad apple into the bunch and it brings everybody down. Um, I've seen that happen. It's toxic. Um, it's, it puts stress on everybody. So I'm very careful who I bring in to the, um, to, uh, the, to the operation. Um, I'm very quick to get rid of somebody that's gonna bring the team that we've built together down. Um, and a lot of just little management and leadership tools that I've learned from a group of people along the way. So, Brandon? Uh, what's, like you said, your dad's key strength is forward thinking. Mm -hmm. What's yours and how do you apply it to your day-to-day -day stuff, like with your employees and your relations? Yeah. Um, who? Time management. I'm actually, I know I'm late all the time, but I'm really good at efficiently managing time. And um, I actually, I've learned kind of the art of delegating. Um, and you kind of have to be, you, you can get a lot more done if ever you put the right people in the right place at the right time. Um, so those are, I guess, two of my strengths that I'd say that I do have. Tom? Sure. You said you gotta get performance what you inspect, not mm -hmm. what you expect. Yep. You said you had to learn to be really selfish with your time. Yeah. Can you talk about those two things a little more? Sure. Uh, the first one, my dad told me this like day two. You have to people do what you inspect, not what you expect. And um I learned that the hard way. Um, I can't remember the exact experience what it was, but I had told, I told, we had a list of things to do. I told the guys, okay, this needs to be done. And um, I assumed it was done. And it was about two weeks later <laughs> that I got a little ash chewing because it wasn't done. And I said, I told them to do it. He said, did you go physically see that they got it done? And I said, no, I told them to do it. OK. Uh, so, so it is true. And, and, and it's all along the board. You, I have to physic. My job has changed to where I am ex inspecting what I say to get done. If I'm there working with them side by side, I know it gets done because I'm there making sure it gets done. When I'm not there, my job is to come back and say, okay, here's what I told you guys to do. Did it get done this way? Um, there's days where I just stick around and kind of pretend I'm doing something just to make sure that the protocol we have in place is being um, implemented. Uh, just the other day, we got done processing some cattle and I'm, I'm there less and less when we do that. So. All I kind of did was I just fiddling around with, I was actually scooping some, cleaning the shoot up. And uh, just kind of watching what the guys were doing when we got done. It's not that I necessarily had to be there, it's just I was inspecting what the next step was. Did they clean the syringes the way they're supposed to? Did they put the, um, throw the right vaccine away? Did they uh, do the right inventory on what needed to be inventoried? And, and so that's where I've learned that you gotta inspect everything all the time. I call it babysitting. It's not, it's inspecting, but whatever. But yes, you have to do it. Um, on the second one, being selfish with my time. Um, in, there's always, I guess, we we're kind of talking about the conferences today, or there's always a, an event to go to, or even if it's in business, but I could spend probably three days a week going to a conference or going to you know, a, a company wanting to take me out to, to lunch or something, or um, the other day a gal, a drug rep, she called and was like, hey, can you go to lunch? I was like, well, do you really need anything? She's like, no, we just have to get with our employees and, and take them to, or our customers and take them to lunch. I said, well, no, I'm busy. <laughs> I have other things I need to be doing, other priorities I need to be doing today. Um, 
when I spend a lot of my time busting it, getting stuff done, at the end of the day, I want to realize that, okay, here's the valuable time that I have left in my day. Here's who I want to spend it with and how I want to spend it. And um, sometimes it's personal, sometimes it's I do have this business meeting, so I have to give up a, f a supper with a friend. And, and you can go too far both ways. And so you have to find that common ground to where I still want to maintain the friendships I have with the friends. However, I still want to be a badass. So I have to be learning, be in the industry, be talking to people. So there's a, a common ground that you have to find. And, and people that waste your time are people that um, they're not there to help you. They're there for themselves. I've learned that. I don't, I don't need to be there so they can get ahead. They'll figure it out on their own. And so Everybody's ready for Brad Paisley, huh? <laughs> Go ahead. All right, well, Cassie, I just want to thank you for being here with us today. And just thank you for your message that you shared with us, the grit that it takes to be a woman in the agricultural industry and um, also that people will challenge you every day in every shape and form and that's a good reminder for all of us to um, hold fast to any of your visions and your plans and your goals and to persevere and to always possess that grit um, as is tradition for our program we just want to thank you again for being here and we want to honor you with the angler medal in recognition of your message here today this evening and and um, just thanks for your dedication and commitment that you have made to our program. As our evening here draws to a close, we want to ask all of the Angler alumni in the room to please stand up. And can we please recognize them? And now would all the current Angler entrepreneurs please stand up for us and please recognize them. Thank you. Our mission here is to empower enterprise builders. And we welcome those of you who are motivated to join our ranks. If you have any questions still about becoming a main, becoming a member of the Angler program, please see Michelle Basford, um, our Chief Experience Officer, Dave Lamb, our Chief Learning Officer, or Tom Field, our Program Director, after we wrap up here during the reception time. I want to remind all of you of our next event, the Angler Identity Rally, and that'll be held at 7 p.m. on October 27th in the Makerspace of Innovation Campus. You don't want to miss this event as we celebrate the accomplishments of our community, welcome our new angler entrepreneurs, and rally to the ideals of our vision. We're fired up to see all of you on the 27th. Um, right after this, just please enjoy some time to introduce yourself to Cassie, thank her for being here with us, and to uh, just enjoy a little bit of fellowship time with everyone. Again, help me thank Cassie for being here with us, and we hope all of you going to the Rob Paisley concert after have fun. Be safe, go Huskers, and make a difference. Thank you.